Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening, I should say. You've alarmed my dog. <laughs> Michael, are you still eating dinner? I am, but I'm just finishing. That's not fair. We can't see you eating. What's that? I can't see you eating. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm drinking. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> but we won't tell anybody that. Okay. It, and this isn't being recorded either, right? No, it isn't. I thought it was being recorded. It, it is. is certainly being recorded. <laughs> Looks to me like we, we've got a quorum. Why don't I call the meeting to order? Um, How prompt. Yeah. It would be surprising. So I don't see anybody here for either public comment or landowner <laughs> education and guidance. Yeah, uh, the, the inquiry from Elizabeth Fernandez O'Brien, I, I don't know if you saw it, she didn't need it anymore. I saw that, yes. Um, so Deacon. Yes. Just, uh, I have about an hour tonight. Um, I'm hoping this whole thing is quick. I hope so. Um, but as far as that inquiry goes, the planning board is going to get more like it about tiny houses because tiny houses are are <laughs> um, are the thing these days, and everybody's talking about them. So um, let's see, what's that noise? Hmm. Anyway, um, for 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 the record, uh, you know, if if Elizabeth was here tonight, I was going to. See if some other planning board member wanted to respond, um, you know, to what the answer would have been for her about a tiny house. And I think we know we need to know what the answer would be, should that question be asked again, which it will be. Yeah. Well, one mm -hmm. thing I'm sort of aside from the actual answer, Jeff, I'm sort of chuckling because it, you know, we wanted a I I'd raised and I think Robert was interested in coming up with a a bylaw amendment about tiny houses. So if we come up with an answer and then we want to refine it, regardless of what happens with the suit, I'd be willing to sort of, you know, draft something and move that forward. Cause I think you're right. It's going to happen more and more. For, at the, as of now, would we say one of two things? It's either an RV and it's not allowed uh, or it's a, uh, if it meets the requirements of an access, uh, accessory apartment, then that's fine. The, the the only way to do it is as, as a detached accessory apartment and yeah. um it it and it can't be a trailer because trailers aren't allowed on except for certain instances so yeah, i said rv i meant trailer yeah yeah so trailers are defined and they're not allowed so you know what we probably be telling her is you could have a detached accessory apartment if you met all the requirements of 4.4-2 um but that thing could not be a trailer. It would have to be a dwelling unit, and the building inspector would have to agree that it was a dwelling unit. Can I ask a historical question? Sure. How come we made the bylaw about uh, trailers? Um, I mean, I mean, I guess I, like generally, I get it. You don't want a bunch of like trailer parks just popping up in someone's yard, but uh, you know, why wouldn't like up to one just be allowed uh, as an accessory apartment? Well, they at the time they were not deemed to be suitable dwelling units. We may want to reevaluate that, um, but that at, at the time that they were not the kind of dwelling units that Shrewsbury wanted to have. I, I would add that at the time we did the new zoning, that that particular issue was carried over from the old zoning, and there was some reluctance to get into a a big argument about it. So okay. a question about if a tiny house, is it mobile? Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be. 
as as the tiny houses are 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 generally conceived of now, yes, they they're on a frame. They have wheels. You can move them around. So how is that different than well, than a trailer? It it isn't. It's a trailer, but it's been it's been dressed up to be called a tiny house now. No, so, no, I I, under, I understand that, but as far as I, our our zoning bylaws are concerned, it fits under the category of a trailer. Correct. Yeah. I don't I don't know if that's totally accurate, Jeff, because I think there are stationary tiny houses that there's a whole category. Yeah, um, and 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 that could be done on a lot if that was the only structure. It could be a tiny house. I'm but, if it, but if there's a single family dwelling also on that on that structure on that lot and you wanted a tiny house in addition it would have to be a detached accessory apartment right now yeah no i get that i get that i was just talking about freestanding definition in the world about tiny houses yeah well but i would i would just i would wonder too i mean it would seem to me that you could propose a set of tiny houses um, through an open space design plan. Hmm. Interesting. Right, but they would have. To, but they'd have to all be dwelling units. They, they, it couldn't be a bunch of trailers. Right. I'm not saying it would be economic, but they would. Would, would they? They would need to have a foundation then. Yes. Well, meaning, the, the, meaning being fixed. The the building inspector couldn't couldn't classify them as trailers. They have. It would have to be a dwelling unit. Um, but by whatever criteria they use, but he would look in our bylaw and he'd, he'd, he'd say, oh my goodness, trailers are defined and prohibited. So, Well, I would suggest, especially Jeff, since you have limited time tonight, I mean, why don't we put it on the agenda for like a robust discussion? Because I think there's enough interest and need for clarification that we could figure out, do we want to go forward? Do we want to tweak something, whatever? But I think it's a good point you raise. And it might be interesting to see what other towns, small rural towns west of 495 are doing. Yeah, I do know, I'll just share quickly. When I was at the Community Foundation, um, Habitat for Humanity, I think, got it, we gave them a grant to do, to look at the building and zoning codes for Northampton to build because they wanted to do this. And it got really complicated. They realized that they, it was less about building and more about changing the regs. So um, it is, you know, it, it does take looking under the covers to figure out what's in place and what needs to change if you want to do it. Can we put this on for the agenda for next month? Sure, sure. I, I, I made a note. Do we want to, do we want to stop this discussion now? Yeah, I think yes. so. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, let's go to, uh, do we want to say, what do we want to say about the annual town meeting? I, I want to say two things. One, I want to thank everyone who was there to the almost bitter end, which was Jeff Weston and Robert and Steve and Nathan. Um, it was, even though it wasn't controversial in the end, it was really nice to have backup because you never know. Um, you never know. So it was, it was really great. And I just personally appreciated that. Um, and I think just the next steps, I can't remember what was an email or not, but um, I got an email from Donna about what the process is. And basically there has to be a formal minutes from town meeting. And then Grace gets a, a, seal, a stamp with the seal of the town of the approved motion. And it goes into the legislature and they do, the house, they do something. And then they send it back to the select board and then it goes back to the legislature. So um, basically at this point, you know, we've got the running room to either do a home rule petition or special legislation um, as one path. And I know Jeff's working on another path and see if that gets any traction, but um, I think we're going forward. Yeah, Michael and I have divided our efforts a little bit here. It, it, it'll have the same end result if we have success. Um, you know, Michael's concentrating on the, the Home Rule Petition Special Act, and I'm concentrating on a bill in the legislature that would apply to all cities and towns. Um, I think Michael's has a better chance of passing. 
given <laughs> given the legislature. <laughs> Well, it's not, it's, not merit based, process based. <laughs> yeah. So it's belt and suspenders approach. So, uh, any more about the legislation? I guess I'm just curious in terms of do we want to talk about? Oh, you got the appointments at the end of that phrase. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, that was what I was wondering if we were ready to go to that. Um, I've been in touch with Jake. He's not up for it, as we suspected. So it's, I, I, I don't think we, you know, so last meeting, Ashley told us she was interested, but it seems like we should officially discuss and then vote if we want to you know, recommend moving her to the select board. And then Deacon, I think you and Rita and Becky just have to figure out the joint meeting, which we could do later in June. Um, but does that make sense to just, if we want to discuss? Um, I mean, I Ash yeah, well, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about the other appointment for a little bit too. Right. I mean, we don't even have a person yet. Deacon, to start, shall we uh, move to, uh, Send Jesse, uh, send uh, Ashley to the uh, select board. I was only. Oh, I'm sure we do want to do that. Um, I was only. I was only going to suggest that we talk a little about what we were going to do about the other one at this before we, before we finish the discussion. Yeah. Well, okay. We we could do a town announce and just sort of open it up like we did last time and. You know, we just have to figure out when we want people to respond by, but it seemed like, I, I think this, yeah, Donna was really appreciative that when we wrote our associate member that we said we would make it broadly, you know, known that there was an opening. So it seems like we should follow through on that. Um, yeah, well, that, well, my guess is it, it's probably the case that that we do, want to deal with Ashley promptly and and advertise for the other one and and have to have a set and have to have a second meeting with the select board yeah I would agree someone with that. comes out of the woodwork quickly but you know yeah you know. well I, I suspect there's going to be a flood of applicants <laughs> please, please. <laughs> Like just a gut gut feeling, you know, guys. It's... <laughs> yeah. Glad I don't have your gut. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad well, you're here, Ashley. We're glad you're here. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Happy great. to be here. Yeah. You're a great associate member. Yeah. Show up, pay attention, contribute. It's great. Most hey, of the time, I pay attention. <laughs> Stay awake. That's right. Doing my best. So, so why don't we? So, do we want to? Why don't we have a motion for um, putting forward a meeting with the select board about reappointing Ashley? I mean, but we should recommend move to recommend her. Would we? Do we need? Do we do that? Um, in June or July? Well, they've got a meeting June twentieth. So well, I just meant I just meant in terms of making the appointment. Do do they make the appointment in advance of the new year? Yeah, all the I mean, all the appointments happening usually happen before June thirtieth, and then they're effective July first. Because yeah. Ashley's still still associate member until June thirtieth anyway. Yeah. So, okay, so, so what's going to happen? Can I make that the, motion, Michael? Well, I, I, when it looks like Nathan wanted to. Okay, Nathan. Yeah, I, I moved that the planning board to recommend Ashley Pycroft to the select board to serve as a associate planning board member for effective July 1st, 2023. Second. Second. I was first. Yes, you were. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, like hands I'll do down. My, uh, I'll do my. Uh, I'll do my best to call the roll. Uh, Jeff Weston. 
I think he's saying I. I read his lips. It was an I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeff Lacey. I. Robert. I. Steve. I. Nathan. I. Um, I'm an I. I'm an I. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Consider yourself called. All right. Well, that's well good. Okay. So so let's move on to um to, to the town announce. I can probably dig up what we sent last time and just adjust it and send it to you, Deacon, if you want. Or I could probably, if I have your permission, I could probably send it out on on behalf of the planning board, but I'll send it to you to look at before we do anything. Okay, great, great. Okay. Um, and one question in terms of if we want to give people a deadline, like I'm assuming last time we asked them for like a short paragraph of statement and then invite them to a meeting. So assuming people stepped up forward, do you want to just prepare for a July meeting if they, or just say a rolling, rolling interest, something of that effect? Um, I, I didn't exactly follow what you were suggesting. I'm sorry. Either we can give them a deadline. So we can give them a deadline before our July meeting, or we can just say rolling interest so that, you know, if July comes and goes, it's not a moot point. Or, yeah, I like the rolling interest idea. If, unless anyone has an objection to it. I mean, even if we get someone, appoint them, you know, if somebody else randomly emails us, hey, I'm interested in serving, you know, we can have their name in our pocket for next time. Okay. I will, I will edit away. Okay. So does anybody want to talk about associate member stuff and anymore? I, I, let's go to the minutes. Um, I'll move to approve the minutes of January 3rd, 2023. I'll second that. I, I read them. That was that, that little blurb from the select board joint meeting. Um, that one. Yep. I, I have no problem with that, those minutes. Nor do I. Okay. So. So that so we're talking about one three. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So is that a motion to approve? M motion to approve the minutes of January third, two thousand and twenty-three. Second. Damn. We already did it. Yeah. My motion the vote. and you second the deacon. Yeah, we just have to vote. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Steve Bressler. Aye. Jeff Weston. Aye. Jeff Lacey. Aye. Robert Raymond. Uh, abstain. Wasn't there. Michael DeCara. Aye. I'm an I. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I'll move to approve the minutes of March 13th, 2023. Second. I'll, sec I'll second that unless you did, Deacon. Um, no, I haven't, I haven't. But there, there was one thing in those minutes that I noticed. Um, and if I can share a screen, I'll find it and show it to you. Do I have permission? Oh, please, please. Okay, I guess I do, let's see. Uh, what's the date of those again? Um, 3.13. 13. Okay, here we go. Everybody see them? So, so there, there were no minutes. These are the second ones in, in the list chronologically, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah, this list is chronological. Okay, all right. So all right, let's see. All right, it's down here. We just passed it. It's something that I said that I don't even understand what it means. Um, so 
Lacey states he doesn't have have to. Um, all right. This is relative to me recusing myself if the Whiteman thing comes before the DVA. Yeah. Um, so Lacey says he doesn't have to since he has already clarified he is chair of the DVA. That's fine because that's sort of disclosure. And this other part, and he is not the sole member to pass an application because more permits require two or more members to approve them. I don't know what that means. If I may. Yes, ma'am. So I believe this is you were stating that because there's only three members on the ZBA board, meaning that because they're like you're not the sole person to be like if you were um you're not the only voting member on there. So meaning that like if we you guys wanted to vote that night in that meeting you like couldn't abstain anymore, then that was more for like clarification that it wasn't um conflict of interest, I guess. Right. The, the, yeah, the, the, hmm, like, he's not the sole member. Are, are, are you, are, is your interpretation, it, it's because I could recuse and it could still be passed? Other way around. Basically, in, during this conversation, you were, you were saying how you wanted to recuse yourself because you were chair of the ZBA. But, um, if you guys wanted to just continue that night and vote it, you were not opposed to, voting that night if that was what the planning board wanted to do because you weren't going to be the only person to review the application as a ZBA because there's two other members. Okay. Jeff, if we said something like, and in order to pass uh, MB, uh, an application with the ZBA requires two or more members to approve them, something like that. So if you were to like recuse, recuse yourself in the voting, during like a ZBA application, like if you weren't able to abstain from this vote, but you were still allowed to abstain to the other vote because the other two members in theory could pass it without your vote. Um, that I don't believe is true because it would be a variance from the ZBA and that requires a super majority, which would be three out of three. Okay, but that's all I remember from this meeting specifically. Okay, I, I would just be comfortable Taking the skins out. It confuses even me that I'm and I'm purported to have said it. Uh, I would I would just be more comfortable striking it. That's fine. And and ending it as uh, with chair of the GBA period. So I guess if we're striking that, you can strike my uh, question about it too. I, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, well. Hmm. You know, it, this this part isn't very important to understanding what happened. What happened is uh, we didn't vote, right? We decided to wait. Yes, well, this was a summary discussion of whether you guys should vote that night or so rather. As long as you got that part where we case. decided not to vote, you know, we're good. Uh, so, yeah, you know. I just say the strike might be because, you know, otherwise it's just Mur Murphy asked if Lacey has to abstain because he's the chair of the ZBA and then you know well it, it is it is helpful because that was the reason that we waited yeah well the, the, the idea was if you fully disclose then often you can go ahead without a conflict um but I wanted to make it even cleaner than that and just abstain um even though technically I probably could have voted, I wanted to abstain anyway. So, yeah. Um, yeah. right. So I could have voted, but chose not to. Right. It seems like striking the yellow part, like you suggested, works fine. I agree. Well, and the and. Yes, yes. And stick a period in there. Yeah. 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 Or just well, or strike one of those two periods at the end of that. <laughs> yeah, and, and bring one of them up. <laughs> okay. So that was my only comment on these minutes. Otherwise, they're, they're great. Yeah. I'll make that little edit now so I won't forget. Okay, so so I'll call I'll call the roll on approving the um, uh, on approving the on approving the three thirteen minutes as amended.
Oh, okay, Jeff Lacey. Aye. Jeff Weston. Aye. Robert. Abstain, wasn't present. Okay, Steve. Aye. Michael. Aye. I'm an I. Don't forget me, Deacon. I'm sorry, Nathan. Nathan. Aye. And you know, I you didn't call me on the last one, and I think I should abstain because I don't think I was there. But that's for the uh, January third. No, we're doing the three thirteen now. Yeah, no, I know that, but uh, and that just wrapped up. But I'm just kind of adding a comment that the the last one we approved, uh, I don't think you called my name on it. He wasn't paying attention, Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, but then I, I, I was. Sorry, gonna... no, I, I think I think he's saying I'm the one who wasn't paying attention. No, 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 I was talking about Nathan. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you no, know, I, you know, I, I didn't shout out because I, it occurred to me when uh, somebody else abstained for not being there that I didn't remember if I was even there. So I was like, oh, and I, I'm not sure that I was at that joint meeting with the select board for for one three. So I'm just saying that for Carrie. Uh, for the one three uh, minutes, I'll abstain also. But I'm an eye for the uh, three thirteen. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, so okay. I'll I'll move to approve the minutes of April tenth, two thousand twenty-three. Second. I'll second that, but I also have another another um, correction in there. No place. Okay. Well, let's let's get that one. Okay, that's what's the date on that? Um, four ten. Four ten. Four ten. Come on, where is it? Oh, here it is. Okay. Okay, it's right here in this um, Whiteman open space design. Third paragraph, and it says, um, it recalls to be part of the discussion that the lot is limited in option since the special permit seeks a common driveway and not a shared driveway. Common driveway and shared driveway are, the, are really the same thing in zoning our land. So it should be a um, individual driveway instead of common in both of these places. Could say individual or single dwelling, um, yeah, but but not common because common and, and shared are interchangeable. Okay. I just have a quick question. Just because that that phrase "common driveway" was used throughout most of it, could I just put? brackets next to it and write individual just because common was said most of the time well we have we have a common drive i think our zoning bylaw refers to common driveway um yeah it doesn't say shared it says common um but what the the context here was the special permit seeks an individual driveway or or a, a, a single dwelling driveway. Um, it, it actually, to read correctly, it should say seeks an individual driveway and not a common driveway. That, that would jive with our zoning. I don't know. I Let's see. Who said that? Michael. Uh, I guess it was me. Yeah, because I, I tried to stop saying everyone's name every time they spoke and make it easier. Right. right. Well, I'm I'm not opposed to making it accurate, especially since this was a point and can I mean it links to the whole single family dwelling thing. So um I'm I'd rather be accurate per Jeff's suggestion. Um even if I use the wrong words, which I might have carry because I'm not as schooled as Jeff. I'm not opposed either. I just want to make sure that so what was so, said versus what I write isn't right. Skewed. So Carrie, in, in, in the right in, in the first sentence, instead of common, 
it should say individual. And then instead of shared, it should say common. Okay. That, that, that jives with our zoning. And then in the next sentence, just replace common with individual. Okay. Mm. 33. I just want to make absolutely sure that's what we call it. Common driveway is what we call it, yeah. So I'm sure that's what Michael was thinking. I'm sure that's what it was. Okay, so any any more on on this on this one four ten? Yes, um, I have one uh, down at the uh, unanticipated business section when I brought up uh, cell phone service at the uh, elementary school. It's uh, it says uh, towards the end of the paragraph. Uh, Murphy appreciates the feedback. His comment came from his concern over children needing to reach their parents in case of emergency. That's not what I said. Uh, what I said was that I was more interested in just parents being able to communicate you know, via cell phone when they're at the site, when they're at the school. How would you like me to rephrase that then? Um, well, you know, I think uh, instead of saying that, you know, kids reach their parents in an emergency, it was, uh, you know, I, I believe I said something like, you know, my intent was not uh, for, you know, kids to be, uh, you know, using cell phone that was just to be able to have parents uh, have the ability to communicate while at the school. I don't know that if you want to bring it up or I can bring it up and write it or something if that's helpful. This was 410, correct? Right, can everyone see? Almost. Not yet. Says, no, this is not. Sorry, I have too many minutes open. Yeah, I feel you. Too many Word documents. Yes. Okay, here we go, right minutes. All right, uh, so we are editing this. All right. Move people so they can see what I'm writing. Concern of... Um, you could say Murphy appreciates the feedback, but was more uh, interested in parents being able to communicate, you know, when they're on the site. or when at the school. There you go. Appreciate it. So, so does the last sentence that Michael is said make sense then? Um, I'll say allow. Uh, you can just take out the last that last line. The extender part's okay. okay. Yeah. Extenders to the main office. Period. Yeah. 
you know, part, part of it was, you know, as part of the conversation, there was that talk of like kids need to reach their parents, but that wasn't what I said. That was kind of like other parts of the conversation that people were having. So like, that's why that was it, you know, but anyway, yeah, that was, uh, that's good. Okay. Um, any more discussion about 410? Okay. Um, did somebody want to make a motion to approve it? To approve I it? did. Okay. And I think I seconded. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Jeff Weston. Aye. Steve Bressler. Aye. Jeff Lacey. Aye. Robert. Aye. Michael. Aye. Did I get you, Steve? Yes. Okay. Aye. And I'm an I. Nathan. Aye. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'll move to approve the really long minutes of April 24th, 2023. Second. Okay. Everybody happy with these? I'll call the roll. Uh, Jeff Weston. Aye. Jeff Lacey. Aye. Steve Bressler. Aye. Robert. Aye. Michael. Aye. Steve. Aye, aye again. Okay, Do Nathan. I get two? Do I get Nathan. two votes? Yeah, <laughs> well, you've got Nathan's. Abstain. <laughs> okay, I'm an aye. So, so Deacon, I noticed Mary Lou has her hand up. Perhaps she had something to say about those minutes. I'm not sure. Um, Mary Lou. Hi. No, I don't have anything to say about the minutes. Um, thank you, Jeff, for recognizing me. Um, I'm Mary Lou Conca for the minute taker. I don't know. Can I speak now, Deacon? Because I'm a little shook about you all talking about putting a cell tower or some kind of cell um, service capability on the elementary school. I don't know if you're in receipt, each and every one of you, or just you, Deacon, as the um, email reader, but I went to a Zoom meeting and it was very, very disturbing. In um, a state other than Massachusetts, and I can get you another copy of that Zoom meeting, they put a cell tower unbeknown to the parents on elementary school and three children developed brain cancer. And one of the mothers of the children who that happened to, she, she gave a, 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 a presentation that was very disturbing. So. When I first came in on my desktop, which I cannot speak on, you were talking about that. And then some kind of vote went on. So I don't know if you're voting to do that, but you know, you can't do that. In yeah. in a in a in a town with people who are educated and intelligent, you you just can't risk it. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you. Um, well, we're gonna do the next set. Yeah, five eight. Yeah, I'll move to approve the minutes of May eighth, two thousand twenty three. Second. Okay. okay, discussion. That Sorry. was that was the little one where we went into executive session. Um, the prior one was um, this one. Was May. we yeah this we, we was talked a very about short meeting yeah it was short we we planned for a town meeting we talked about the letter to the AG a little bit okay uh, I don't uh, believe we, so we must have, we, we must have one more after this okay. no this is the last one this oh, is, it is. okay I, uh, Jeff what, you what? are co correct there was two uh, joint meetings between the planning board and, and select board with executive session we had the minutes from one of them. I assume another one will be followed uh, or come out, you know, maybe for next time, but it wasn't, it wasn't released for uh, review today. 
I, I read one of those. There, there were five, I think. I, I read one of them, which was just us going into executive session. That was the, the only thing that. Occurred. Yeah, that was April 24th. The one we just approved. Them? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. There so, are executive minutes, but I believe those do not get voted to be released to the public until the matter that was discussed is resolved as approved right. by right. planning board. Right. Okay. So so any more discussion about five eight? Hearing none, I'll call the roll. Um, uh, Jeff Weston. Aye. Jeff Lacey. Aye. Robert. Aye. Steve. Aye. Nathan. Aye. Michael. Aye. I'm an I. Good. Good. Um, so, so Carrie has her hand up, I think. I was hoping I could um comment on mary lou's comment to i think i understand her con possible confusion um so mary Please. when you had originally joined we were in the middle of discussing minutes and it was the set of minutes from what did we uh i think april 10th when that original discussion was discussed and we were going over um a comment murphy had made as a suggestion edit to those minutes so that's why we were talking about it and then they voted to approve the minutes, not anything related to the subject, if that's helpful. Thank you. It is very helpful. <laughs> You're welcome. I appreciate that. Okay. okay. Well, um, um, I think it was Michael who suggested that we put the next topic on the menu, on the agenda. Yeah. Um, um, so let's let's do it. Yeah, so we all got um, the draft wetlands regulations from the CONCOM asking us to comment on them or if we wanted to comment. So it seemed like just, it was a very long document, but it seems like um, in respect for the request to comment that if we wanted, if we had read them, we had comments that we could share them with Miriam who's here. I don't know if maybe we should have Miriam give like a, a short introduction to it. Um, I know I couldn't do it. Well, she was here. Uh, she's there, hands up. Here. Pretty picture. Okay, well, Miriam. Thanks. Uh, I just thought uh, since I jumped on, maybe I could um, just share some information that would help you um, kind of uh, think about your comments and feedback. Just uh, as a as a uh, FYI, the draft regulations that we're circulating are still drafts, and we're still working on them, um, and they're going to be improved upon. We had some a meeting, a working meeting last week with our consultant, who gave us some feedback that we are incorporating into the draft. So there are going to be some changes to what. Um, we will probably have on the website. What we'll do is- Miriam, real quick question. Are, th is th are these drafts on the, on the website or were they sent by yeah. email? Both. I'm sorry, I just, I didn't see them. I, I'm... On the website? Are, are they on the website? We have a sub page on our home, our, our conservation commission homepage. We have a sub page dedicated to the bylaw regulations. Okay, thank you. It's, it's linked there. And what we'll do is if we have a revised version, we'll have both the original and whatever revisions so people can compare um, if there's changes that we make. But um, I think we're going to try to condense the regulations and take out some um, repetitive information. Um, but the reason why we are developing these regulations is uh, because of feedback that we've received uh, from Donna McNichol and from MACC that towns that don't have clearly defined and spelled out regulations will not um, be able to necessarily hang on to their home rule jurisdiction upon appeal. That um, courts, when they are appeals 
for permits issued under local bylaws. We'll look to the regulations to see how the jurisdiction differs from the Wetlands Protection Act, the state law. And if that jurisdiction is not defined clearly in the regulations, there is a possibility that the court will throw out the uh, local jurisdiction and default to the state jurisdiction. And all towns that have wetlands protection bylaws have them because they are more restrictive or conversely more protective of wetlands than the state wetlands protection act. That's the reason why the towns have them. If they simply mirrored the state law, then they would just be ruled out. They would be thrown out upon appeal because they're not um, basically exercising home rule. So, so, so Mary, Mary, we're talking about two two things here. One, the local bylaw, which must have been approved at a town meeting, and then your regulations that go along with that bylaw. Is that correct? We're only talking about the regulations right now. So, but but there is a there is a bylaw. Yes. Okay. So bylaw, the, bylaw was passed in 1987. It was subsequently updated. Um, and in the bylaw, there's a provision which says, as do all wetlands protection bylaws and ordinances across the state, that the Conservation Commission promulgates the regulations through a process. And that is what we are doing. There are current regulations, but they're badly out of date. They were revised in the year 2000. And in the last 23 years, if you take a look across the state at conservation commissions that are passing new regulations, you'll see that they're way more detailed and are essentially mirroring some of the components that you see in the state regulations. Um, so it's been an evolving kind of um, development for conservation commissions to develop more detailed and more scientifically explicit regulations uh, so that upon appeal projects will uh, that are permitted the permit decisions will hold up um, so that was the initial reason for updating the regulations the other reasons were that um, our fees have not been updated in 25 years and are pretty inadequate and we were also encountering a bunch of situations where the current regulations and the current bylaw we felt we're creating an undue burden on small residential projects because there was no pathway for a streamlined kind of easy permit. Um, everybody had to get in line to submit an application for an RDA, which can be quite expensive these days with the uh, cost of putting in a legal notice and sending out a butter notifications. It can amount to many hundreds of dollars which we didn't think was equitable for maybe small projects that maybe only were costing a few hundred dollars to the landowner to have then this, this onerous expense for a permit. So we were trying to streamline things in order to avoid that situation where there were small projects that were just being overregulated. So how are these approved? Are they approved by your commission? They are approved by the conservation. After commission. a public hearing or after a public hearing or more or multiple public hearings. We have at one public hearing scheduled for uh, the 21st. And we've had some public meetings. Um, and we hired a third party reviewer, um, Patrick Garner, who's put in many hours working with us. And then we've had an unpaid consultant, Janice Stone, who is a very experienced wetland scientist, conservation agent, former chair of the Shutesbury Conservation Commission and former board member of uh, the MACC, um, who's also been working on this. So we've been getting some expertise as well as looking at how other communities are promulgating regulations. And I just want, I don't wanna repeat all this cause it's all on our website. We have a sub at this page that we kind of created with some educational materials for the public. And um, I think that that's a good place to start. I, I would really hope that you would look at that page um, to try to understand better what we're doing. Um, but what I wanna just highlight- Is there, is there a side-by-side? -side? Um, so it, it, to make comparing the new with the old easier? Well, the new is, the old is about five pages long. So 
the side by side wouldn't be all that useful because there's no performance standards. There's almost no definitions. There's very few procedures spelled out. You can, but we do have a link there with the regulations that are currently in force, and you can look at them. So uh, can I ask? The original regulations were five pages long. Well, I'm I'm exaggerating. Maybe they're eight pages. Okay, but your document is sixty-seven pages long. Yeah. Is well, that? Let me, can I explain that? I was kind of trying to. I'm getting. I feel like I I I have a. Let me just throw this out there, and then you guys ask the questions if I don't answer your questions. Um, so what communities are doing is they're creating regulations that spell out in pretty explicit detail how decisions are going to get made around permit applications, including what the performance standards are and what the scientific basis is for protecting each resource area. And that takes up a lot of real estate. The reality is that that's important upon appeal or on reviewing very complex projects, but for your average landowner with a small project, that's a lot of pages of scientific um, text that isn't really that meaningful because a lot of the projects that we're gonna review for small homeowner projects are gonna be exempt from a lot of these performance standards because they're so small in scope, there isn't gonna be a significant impact on resource areas. So I, you know, that's one of the things I wanna highlight is that um, if you don't use it, you lose it. If we don't have performance standards, if we don't spell out what our criteria are, then upon appeal, we can't rely on making things up or just because we said it in a public hearing that we were gonna rely on these decisions. If we haven't sort of put those standards up there in advance and publish them in regulations that were available to the applicant, it won't stand up on appeal is what we've been advised. Um, okay, that's a question, Miriam. Another question, if, is it possible to take, to pull these new regulations, distill them out of this 67 page document, but link them to the rationales that you're talking about instead of kind of glomming everything? Cause it's a hard document to go through. 67 pages in the rationale. You understand what I'm asking? Um, can I jump in? I, think, I don't know that that I can do that. I don't think I can anticipate any possible appeals and why we would need them. Right. I think the point is that, let me, uh, I do, I'm not oh. quite sure with what I wanted to say, but I think the point here is that there's a growing consensus across the state, across conservation commissions about what are the most important preambles to put in regulations as well as performance standards. We're not really reinventing the wheel. We're kind of um, encapsulating what is the growing consensus across towns. And so as a point of um, example, we have posted on our page regulations from several other towns, some large, some small. And to give you some sense, uh, some of the regulations are 95 pages long. Some of them are 63, 83 pages. I mean, they're all over the map and some are much shorter. Um, but for most applications, the performance standards, which takes up about half of the whole regulations are not gonna be all that meaningful. Uh, what is gonna be most meaningful for applicants is gonna be what are our rules for the individual types of permit applications. And, and what I wanted to say about that is that I wanna make it really clear that Regulations are kind of a reference that we can all look back to, to keep us honest and for predictability. But for applicants, it's not going to be a go-to instruction manual for how to submit an application. What we have to do is distill these regulations into instructions that are easy to understand and put them up on our website for applicants. And we do have that currently. We have checklists and written instructions for applicants. And we'll revise them once we've settled on our regulations if there's any changes. But as is true for other communities, the regulations are not a how-to manual. They're really kind of the encyclopedia, if you will. So I was just gonna jump in on Steve's comment because um, I talked to Miriam earlier and you all know I like policy stuff and wonky stuff. And you know what I was saying was the, 67 pages it's hard to access and what gave me comfort was this notion that it really is a reference and sits on the shelf and then Miriam said that there's checklists for applicants and so if there's easy 
to understand this is what I have to do in this situation to do the right thing so I don't get caught up, caught up in you know getting my hand slapped. That makes a lot of sense. And then they would sort of be consistent with the regulations. But um, I agree, it's a very dense document. I, I like that it's very comprehensive. I mean, it's, it's hard to follow as a lay person, but I appreciate the, the comprehensiveness. The other thing I would just say that I, I appreciated was there's places of commonality of things that the zoning bylaw prioritizes and things that the wetlands regulations prioritize. So it's sort of nice to have them be mutual reinforcing. But for my, my own sense, the fact that there's checklists and there'll be more user-friendly instruction stuff to accompany this makes it, I think, a, a good way to proceed. Could I just add that if anybody's ever looked at the regulations, the Wetlands Protection Act, regulations, um, they're as clear as mud, and yet um, applicants still have to apply under those regulations. So, um, and it's up to conservation commissions to translate those regulations into instructions for applicants because the state doesn't do it. <laughs> and even if you look at their forms, they're, again, as clear as mud. Um, so, if you're thinking, oh, this is creating a whole bunch of work for applicants, what I would say is applicants are already faced with this onerous task already with the state law. Um, this isn't necessarily making any more work um, for anybody, I don't think. I guess when I look at these, I'm gonna be asking is, you know, for, for the average person in Shutesbury, which is a homeowner um, trying to do something, is um, are these regulations going to um, make it more confusing or clearer? Are they going to make it more time consuming or less? Are they going to make it more expensive or less? And I'm going to be favoring the regulations that are clear, um, that don't take a ton of time to comply with and are affordable, for the average person. Family. Can I respond to that? Please. Um, um, one thing I would say is that Jeff was mentioning that he only had, was here for an hour, and that seemed to me like pretty good for all of us. So I was hoping we could wrap this up pretty quickly and and then do a little yeah. bit more and then adjourn. So. Well, let me just respond to that because I think it's yeah, really yeah. important. And I, I I just want to concur with you, Jeff, that I agree with you, and I, I feel the same way that um, you know we don't want to overregulate small projects that are not all that meaningful in terms of their impact on resource areas. So one of the things that a lot of communities are doing is they're creating a new a new lane, a new permit pathway for small projects and. Different towns call them different things. What we're calling it in these regulations is a small project permit. And a small project permit, which we define, um, does not require a butter notifications. It doesn't require a legal notice. It doesn't require a public hearing. What it is is a very simple application that we will develop, a very reasonable fee. I think we're suggesting $50 and a site visit. And then we would discuss it at one of our meetings and issue it. And so, you know, theoretically, it could take two weeks, three weeks for an applicant to get it. And they would have minimal expense involved. We wouldn't be requiring wetland delineations or engineered plans. People could give us handwritten sketches if they wanted. Um, and we're hoping that that is going to clear the way for a lot of people um, to get permits in an easier way rather than having to submit for RDAs. So that is one of our hopes. So I got to ask this one, one more question. Does this, how does, is this being motivated at all by what's happening on law 032? No. And it, will it affect anything that's happening on law 032? No. Okay. Not in my opinion. Okay. Uh, we're not changing anything that we're doing we're just explaining what we're doing. Okay. The most part, <laughs> you know, the, what we've been doing already, but hasn't been made explicit. We're now writing it down. Okay. Why don't I? Uh, why don't I put this, put this down as an item for the July meeting? I mean, we'll 
I mean, we're not going to finish this tonight. I don't know if we have to, I mean, Miriam, you're not looking for us to vote in support or anything. It's not like a town meeting where a committee signs off. You just wanted to explain this. Well, yeah. And I guess, you know, if there were particular things that the planning board or other town boards really felt it would be important for, uh, for the ways in which your jurisdiction and ours kind of interact with one another, um, if there's areas of contact that seem important, we wanna to try to make things consistent um, and we wanna process it's clear. And we do have a, a section in the regulations that involves coordination with other boards, um, but um, you know we're all kind of protecting and uh, preserving open spaces. That's kind of what all these land use boards are involved with. And we're also trying to help landowners uh, live on their properties and use their properties, so. I'll put it on the list. All right, well, thank you, everybody. Miriam, thank you for all of your wonderful work. Beautifully written, um, incredibly well-researched. Um, I certainly appreciate it, and I think we all do. Thank you so much. It's Jeff, the biologist. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right. Mr. Chairman, before I turn into a pumpkin over here, I, I had a quick unanticipated business item just to bring to the planning board's attention. Please. If, if I might. Um, on January 19th, the date of our special town meeting, we received um, um, stuff. I'm not sure if we actually received it or whether it was dumped <laughs> off at the town hall. I don't want to say received, I want to say dumped off um, uh, preliminary plan with the intent of freezing the zoning on those those lots. In order to freeze the zoning successfully, um, they have to come back seven months later with a definitive plan. So that means by roughly August 19th, they need to submit definitive plans to the planning board. And then we get to review those. Um, and if we approve them, um, then they could make a claim that the, uh, the zoning freeze in, is in effect for eight years thereafter. So uh, all, all, without getting into the ins and outs of that state law, I'm just saying there is a date that we need to be mindful of, and it's roughly August 19th. Um, see if we get plans, definitive plans. So there we go. That's okay. it. Cool. Hey, can I do the next one before Jeff turns into a pumpkin? Uh, I think it's too late. Look at him. <laughs> Uh, hey, you're talking about my giant head? <laughs> <laughs> I got one thing before Jeff leaves, too. Okay, cool. Carrie, I see your hand. you want to just go first? Yeah, it's something smaller. So with those plans that were dropped off, they had checks with them to be submitted. Um, I Because of everything that happened, I never touched them. I let them sit there until instructed otherwise, because I did not want to disturb what was going on. Um, and I know at one point, I don't know who, at one point someone suggested that I reach out to them, asking them if they want me to mail them back or not. But because things are still in like the courts, I don't feel comfortable doing so because I don't want to entangle myself into whatever. Um, so should I, I just wanted to keep everyone in the loop with that. And also, should I go to Donna and ask what I should do before I do anything? Because again, I don't want to make anything worse. I, I don't think we ought to cash them. Um, well, no, I don't think so either, but I could, I mean, since obviously they haven't been touched or deposited, I could also just shred them. So that way they, nothing happens and they're. I don't think it's a good idea to be in touch with them about this. It'll only serve as a reminder that they need to. That's do why I'm asking if I should ask Donna. Yeah. I didn't want to just go and ask her without at least informing and or asking the board. We could send them to Donna. It's sort of like having things um, in escrow, so to speak. But it probably doesn't hurt to call Donna. I mean, ask Donna, right? It's only an email. Uh, um. I, I, just because I would prefer them not to s sit there longer, I should say. 
I, I, I think we should mention it's Donna. Um, and uh, yeah, I, mm, I don't really want to discuss the case. Um, yeah. Well, I'm only, asking, I'm only asking about that portion. Right. Um, do you want to do it, Jeff? I just want to guess or no. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. Have that. I'll do it. That works. I'll ask. Great. So my well, quick we, thing, well, yeah. think, no, Deacon, you want to go your chair? You go first. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to give a very quick update on this legal defense fund. So I think I CC'd the board. I'm not sure. I know Deacon was in the loop, but um, I basically asked the select board um, if we could create a legal defense fund for the town. Um, and they have, what Donna said is it's basically a motion the select board has to pass. Um, I've asked for it to be considered on the June 20th meeting. Um, and if that happens, then the town has the ability to defray some legal costs. So just an update. So it, it might be in the works, but I, we won't go into the case more than that to see. We might try to get some outside money. Um, so taxpayers aren't just footing the bill. Is, is, is this coming up at the select board meeting next week? Um, I think it's a, I think their next their next meeting is the twentieth, if I'm correct, because they met on the sixth. Yeah, I, I wrote that meeting down, but I'm trying to remember why. Is, is that uh, why? Um, or well, it could be if, if Deacon's successful, it could be the joint meeting for Ashley. Okay, all right, so good, we'll be there. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be surprised if I weren't successful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. Um, I'm sorry, when would this joint meeting be? Um, I don't know of it. Well, we're just saying it's probably going to, if if everything works out, it'd be June 20th. June 20th? Yeah, and it's, they usually meet like 5.30 to 7 something. It'd be to, to reappoint Ashley. Uh, and would you like us to be there? We need to be so we can vote. Okay, June 20th? Okay, great. Yeah, to, I think to be confirmed by Deacon. Yeah, yeah, but it isn't done yet. Um, but yeah, we 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 bring the we bring the people forward to the joint meeting, and then we all vote as a group and a simple majority. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, and it, and this is an open. This is a really straightforward meeting. So if you if you're on vacation, you don't need to come. Right. I know it's probably a skip. Stupid question, but I have to be there, right? I don't think you do. Oh. I mean, although it'd certainly be better. But yeah, I, mean, I think again, I if can. You, if you need to be on vacation, then you should be. I actually have school that day. It's my last day of school. That's oh. next Tuesday, right? Yeah. The twentieth. Next Tuesday is yes. That'd be the twentieth. Yeah, next Tuesday, right? Because okay, tomorrow's the thirteenth, right? Next Tuesday. So I'll look in my email to see if it's happening, or I could just look at the agenda for the. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll email I'll email what happens. Okay, thank you. Dickie, did you have sure a forum has to be present at that meeting? I will not be there. Uh... No, it, it no, it's it's it's. Uh, but we do need, need a to get a majority. You need to get a majority of the select board and planning board members in attendance. Right, but there has to be a quorum of both. It, yeah, otherwise we can't do any business. Have a joint meeting. So we have to have four of us and they have to have two of them. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. So I I I'll 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 go. I have that on my calendar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just put it on my calendar. Uh, I okay. should be able to go as well. Thank you. Okay. Great. Great. Um Deacon, did you have a short one? I, yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, um, last a year ago, I agreed to be chair for another year, um, and it's coming to an end. So, I mean, I think people should think about electing a different chair when when the July meeting comes. Well, Deacon, I remember that, and I've been thinking about it. And I've been lobbying someone in this room who has a really pretty 
good beard going. Um, so <laughs> we don't have to discuss it now, but. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I, I see two. I, no. see, I see two big beards. <laughs> One should only chair one meeting a committee at a time. So that takes me out. So no need for a speech yet, Nathan, for why you want to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I would be supportive of that. I, I, I would, I, I would miss the steady hand of, of the, at the tiller for so long, but, uh, but I'd welcome younger blood in into the mix. So. Yeah. Thank you. It'll be good. It'll be good. I'll, I'll still be on the board. Look at that stoic face, man. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I got one really quick thing before we end, because it was a... It should be the last one. Yeah. No, it's a brainstorm with the CPC thing that we never want to talk about. If I do a town announce asking if people want to be associate members, I could also say, is there anyone who's interested in being on the... Um, Community Preservation Committee representing the planning board and see if we get any takers. Yeah, and it could be the same person. It could be. You could put that in the email. Yeah. So if that's okay with every, I'll just, I'll, it'll be an yes. advertisement for our slots. Great, that's great. That's a good idea. Great. Um, so do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Nathan. Aye. Jeff Wait, Weston. Dis discussion, discussion. Okay, speak up. <laughs> well, no, you have to ask if there's going to be, if any, there's, anyone wants to discuss it. Okay, I, I was over anxious. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hearing no more, I'll, I'll call the roll. Uh, Nathan. Aye. Michael. Aye. Jeff Lacey. Aye. Jeff Weston. Aye. Steve Bressler. Aye. Robert Raymond. Aye. I'm an eye. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.